Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three different DPS fire staff builds that we use inside New World. This can be used across PvP, PvE, and even 3v3. Say that three times fast. But we're going to deep dive in, into this, looking exactly how I build them, what perks I select. Not only that, but I also give some recommendations on perks on armor that you probably need to use in order to get the maximum amount of damage out of your builds. So let's hop into the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the builds, and we'll bring you more New World content like this. All right, let's hop into our first build. We're gonna start with the Fire Staff here, okay? Um, I'm gonna start on the Pyromancer side, just due to the fact that it's short and sweet and it's pretty simple, okay? So we're gonna have to take Pyromania, um, just in fact to get Incinerate. Um, on Incinerate, it creates a circle around you that deals 130% weapon damage. Not only that, but it stacks on top of en enemies that will deal an extra 6% of weapon damage each second for six seconds. It's pretty strong, it's pretty powerful, especially if you're getting surrounded by mod. AOE effect that deals a lot of damage and then we're gonna max that out we're gonna take scorched each hit of an incinerate causes an additional stack of burning cauterized runes restores 20% of incinerate incinerate damage dealt as health so it also heals you and then flame out incinerate hits twice very strong very powerful okay of course we're gonna want kindle we want the burn to last 20% longer um, just do the fact that you know, 20% could be a pretty decent amount of time. A couple extra seconds there will get a couple extra damage out for you. Then we're going to take combat speed. When you are activate a fire staff ability, you gain 10% haste for five seconds. This is very good in case you're running away. You could throw incinerate around you. You could throw fireball or anything that you might be using. And this will give you haste so you can run away faster to get away from the mobs. So we're going to start with the fire mage side here. Um, the first perk we're going to take is going to be Spell Focus. Heavy attacks restore 5% of your max mana on hit. So this is pretty good if you're using a lot of your abilities. Heavy attacks will help restore it. And then we're going to take Fiery Restoration. Heavy attacks reduce Fire Staff cooldowns by 10% on hit. This helps you create faster cooldowns so you can use your abilities more often. Um, with this build, you're going to have to use a lot of heavy attacks in order to get the most out of it. Okay. Um, next, we're going to take Clear Mind. Um, just while holding fire staffs uh, and above 50% mana, you gain 5% empowerment. Increases your damage. Very key. Um, then we're going to use Fireball. You shoot a Fireball, deals 140% weapon damage on impact, and leaves behind a 3, million, uh, three meter burning field that lasts for 6 seconds. The burning field deals 10% of weapon damage on each second. Very key. So this is why we want burn over here why we want to kindle because it lasts 20 percent longer so if this lasts for six seconds we can probably get one and a half two extra seconds out of it gives an extra 20 percent damage on fireball so very good then we're gonna take scorch earth uh, fireball burning field lasts for nine seconds gonna stick around longer do more damage for us and then catch direct hit with fireball gives you 10 percent of your max mana and reduces your fire staff abilities by seven percent um, very key if you're good at aiming this will help you give you cooldowns to get quicker so you can use it again faster and not only that but you get 10 percent mana back to you okay then we're going to use singe light attacks inflicted a stack of burning on foes dealing six percent of weapon damage each second for six seconds uh, again burn lasts 20 percent longer so you're going to get a little bit longer than six seconds here and you can keep stacking them with your light attacks very good for just little quick attacks give you a little bit extra damage then we're going to take clear casting not after taking after not taking damage from an attack in the last three seconds you deal five percent more damage being a ranged dps you're not going to have a lot of aggro you can usually take an extra free five percent a lot of the time so just be aware try not to take any damage for three seconds and you'll get an extra five percent damage it's pretty simple for it uh for ranged dps next we're going to take spell singer your fire staff abilities gain an extra 10 percent chance to critical strike this is very good as you're using pillar of fire fireball and incinerate you definitely want to increase your rate of critical strikes you do more damage you get more burning effect overall great ability flare heavy attacks no longer consume mana so now with your heavy attacks tied in with fiery restoration your heavy attacks won't consume mana and not all of that but it's going to reduce the amount of cooldowns by 10 percent per hit so we got to make sure we're taking advantage of those two things and then last but not least we're going to run runes of helios uh, using a fire staff ability places a two meter uh, rune on the ground that increases your damage by 25% while standing in the rune. The rune lasts for seven seconds. Uh, 
very strong for us as a caster. And if you could kind of stay in the same area, you could take advantage of this damage buff, okay? And then we have Pillar of Fire. Now, you could change this out for Flamethrower, depending on how close you want to be, but I definitely want to stay back as a ranged DPS. And I'm going to use Pillar of Fire because I can aim this and it does 100% weapon, 170% weapon damage. So I can get a lot of damage pretty quick with this ability and the cooldown is only 10 seconds. And I can probably cool this down a little bit faster with my heavy attacks. So we definitely want to take advantage of it. If not, you just switched over to uh, Flamethrower or Burnout, which are two pretty good uh, evasion and close range damage. Uh, but I might change the build a little bit if I went with Flamethrower. But this one, I'm going to definitely run with Fire, uh, with Pillar of Fire. Okay, let's look at the Ice Gauntlet build that we're going to be running with this. Uh, we're going to start on the Ice Tempest side, which is uh, the easier side to start with. So, of course, we're going to take the first one, Critical Rejuvenation. Gain 15% mana whenever you critically hit a target. Very key as you use the Ice Shower, Ice Storm, or the Pillar, or your Ice Pylon. It's going to help you do... Uh, gain a little bit of mana back when they hit criticals, uh, critical hits. Ice Storm. This is a must in every single Ice Gauntlet build. I don't care who you are, you gotta run this, okay? This is a 5 meter radius targeted area. Gives you 70% weapon damage for every 0.33 seconds or 5 seconds. So this is gonna hit you 3 times. So it's pretty much like a 50% damage, uh, weapon damage uh, for 5 seconds, okay? So it's pretty good. And not only that, it helps slow the enemies, okay? And then we're gonna max this out. Take Weakening Gust, incoming damage is increased 10% for 3 seconds on enemies in Ice Storm while they are below 50% health. So very uh, useful to use on mobs that are low on health. Then we're going to take Storm Summoner. Ice Storm Summoner uh, cost is decreased by 80% when mana is full. We definitely want to use this as a, one of our first casts so we can get that 80% uh, decrease cost. And then not only that, but we want to use Punishing Storm. It increases increases Ice Storm damage by 10% for each enemy in the storm. So the bigger the mob, the more damage you're going to do, okay? And then we're going to take Energized uh, Critical. Increases critical damage of the Ice Gauntlet abilities by 10% while stamina is full. It's pretty solid. Um, then we're going to take Critical Frost. Increase critical chance by 15% when hitting enemies in a frosted area or hitting enemies with Frostbite. So if you have a, a ice pylon and they run through the storm and the ice pylon shoots them, you get a nice little critical chance increase um, from those uh, abilities, especially if they have frostbite. Then you're gonna have heavy freeze. Heavy attack, heavy attacks will root a target if they are standing in the ice storm or frostbite. Root lasts for one second and has a four second cooldown after the root expires. So this helps trap them in the storm longer where you can help do more damage while they're in there and take full advantage of them while they have frostbite and get a little bit more chance of a critical hit with a critical frost activated, okay? Then on this side, the builder side, we're gonna have ice pylon. Not only that, but we're gonna take quick frost, increases movement speed by 10% in frosted areas. This is gonna be very helpful with ice storm and then your ice shower activated. You'll be able to move faster, evade uh, quicker and get away from enemies. And then we're gonna max out the ice pylon all the way down. Greater pylon, it, increase, it increases damage of the ice pylon by 10% against slowed enemies. Pylon regen, uh, the regeneration to full health five seconds after last damage taken. So if there's no damage taken, it's gonna regenerate to full health. Very helpful, especially if you put it far back and your tank's doing a pretty good job at pulling aggro. This could do a lot of damage for you. Um, then you have pylon dodge. Dodging increases ice pylon's rate of fire for three seconds. So as long as you keep dodging, this is going to help you increase your fire rate on the ice pill or on the ice pylon. So make sure that you guys are utilizing this when you place your pylon. Okay. Then we're going to have pylon refresh. A successful hit from the ice pylon extends its lifetime by one percent, or by one second. Sorry, not one percent. Um, for a maximum of forty-five seconds, you can do pretty good damage, especially if it's on bosses. You can last for a very long time with this. And then we're going to hop over to ice shower. Is going to be the next ability we take. Um, if you've seen this, you lay a curtain down of ice shower and it helps um, hit enemies. Enemies that enter the ice storm shower will be stricken with a powerful frostbite. Frostbite roots for one second, blocks sprinting and dodging, slows movement speed by 50% while uh, and will remain on target for three seconds after exiting the shower. So again, it's got frostbite tied together with critical frost. We have more chances of hitting a critical attack. So this is very good for us, okay? And then you wanna do enduring shower, it increases, increases the dur duration to 7 seconds. Man, I can't talk today, man. Sorry, guys. 
Um, then we're going to do a quick shower. Any ally, including self, will get a 25% movement be speed boost for two seconds when entering ice shower. So if somebody's chasing you, you could lay down the ice shower. It's going to decrease them by 50% their speed and increase you by 25% speed. So that gives you a 75% increase to speed overall, evading enemies, which is very good. Gives you, buys you a little bit of time. You could do a lot with that. So it's a very good perk to have. Then we're going to have frigid showers. Frostbite applies rend to targets reducing their defense by 10%. And if you know anything about rend, it can stack. So um, if other people are using abilities that have rend, it will also stack with this. So it's very good to have, and especially if you're trying to evade and you can do more damage. And then we're gonna take ultimate frost because we have all 10 abilities unlocked on this side. We're able to do this, which doubles ice pythons health and extends ice, ice pythons frosted area radius to five meters. Standing in the frosted area doubles quick frost and in Powered frost boost uh, and frost bonuses. Okay, so this is our build. Take a screenshot of it. This is pretty solid um, build for the fire staff and the ice gauntlet. This is what I'm going to run as a DPS build um, in a lot of different things. This could be used in arenas. This could be used um, in dungeons. This is probably what I'd run in a dungeon if I was running um, a DPS build. This also could be used in 3v3s that are coming up or outpost rush. Um, it's pretty good all around DPS build. This is the main build I run when I run the fire staff. Um, I have both my ice gauntlet and my fire staff maxed out on my main account. So I like to use these two and it's pretty solid. I do throw in the flamethrower a lot uh, instead of the pillar if I'm doing mass mobs or I'm just training weapons or doing, you know, uh, chest runs. I kind of like it because there's a lot of people around. I don't take the aggro. I can get in close and do a lot of damage and the burn effect is insane. So um, just point of thought. You definitely want to make sure you have armor perks on these, okay guys? You want to have Empowering Fireball. You want to use Siphoning Incinerate and Refreshing Pillar of Fire. And make sure your ring has fire damage to get the most out of this class. So make sure when you guys go to buy armor and you're looking for best in slot armor, make sure that they have these perks on there. So that way um, you get the most damage out of your build on the fire stack because it is pretty much the main DPS weapon. The ice gauntlets there is just to improve it, but you definitely wanna have these perks on your armor when you're going through that. So I'm gonna list them on the screen right here for you guys, and you'll see a nice little overlay, and it'll explain, and make sure you take a picture of it. These perks are pretty much gonna stay the same throughout these builds, but I'll make sure I touch on them in every single build we do. All right, let's take a look at our second build. This is gonna be a solo DPS build uh, for myself that I run just to kind of test the waters as I kind of trained my fire staff I found this very effective when I'm solo and I don't have a team with me if I'm running with a team I'm probably not going to run this build but let's hop into it and show you exactly what I got going on here um, we're gonna run the fire staff we're gonna run the same thing as we ran in the last build the only difference here is we're gonna do flamethrower so I'm really not gonna burn you guys out in going through this I want to keep the video kind of short and keep you entertained so we're going to use the same build we have last time, except we're going to take from Pillar of Fire. We're going to take the Flamethrower, and I'm going to explain to you why here, okay? You could probably use this build, and you could probably tweak it a little bit better to make it more tailored to the Flamethrower. But I'm going to show you why I just put the Flamethrower here and didn't keep the Pillar of Fire. It's really based on keeping you close and keeping you inside the sacred ground of the life staff we're using. So again, I'll just do a quick overrun. We're going to run Fireball, Incinerate, and Flamethrower all close range attacks that you can use in order to have the most maximized build for the most damage here, okay? So we definitely wanna make sure that we have this. And then, again, we're gonna switch over to the Life Staff. All right, so Life Staff. This is pretty much for when you're solo. With this build, I believe that you can keep yourself healed for a decent amount of time and it'll make a lot of sense why we picked the close range attacks and the Fire Staff in order to do the DPS for us, okay? So of course, we'll start on the protector side just because it's pretty much easier. Um, we're gonna take Ben Light. After you dodge, your heals are 20% more effective for five seconds. Um, so as you're dodging, uh, you're gonna get a nice little bonus and it's a pretty easy way to get a buff. And I'll show you why we take it, okay? Then we're gonna take Orb of Protection and we're gonna max this all the way out, okay? So you shoot this at the ground and it gives you four to five for 20 seconds and also heals yourself. Uh, heals and allies for 8% of weapon damage and it deals 146% weapon damage when it hits an enemy Okay, so it's pretty good fortify helps reduce the incoming damage So again when we're close with the DPS in the fire staff This is gonna keep us protected where we can take a little bit more tanky approach and it's pretty good here Okay, not only that but we're gonna do protectors blessing uh, 
if orb of protection hits an ally they gain recovery for 10 seconds this also this also occurs to you so you can use it a lot and then shared protection if you successfully heal an ally with an orb of protection you also gain fortify in recovery so it's pretty simple um, if you do have somebody with you it's pretty uh pretty good then we have aegis when hitting uh, when this projectile hits it affects all allies within three uh, three meter radius it's pretty good and then we're gonna take protector strength if you have a buff you heal for 10 percent more so you can see how these two tie directly together it's pretty easy to dodge and then heal yourself to get that little 10 percent bonus and then this one gives you um 20 so it really gives you 30 percent by just dodging which is phenomenal so make sure you guys have both those activated it should be on every healer build then over here we're going to take Divine Embrace with the new update coming out. This is going to heal you for 120% more damage. And we have found in the PTR that it heals better than Light's Embrace, which this is what most people take. Um, but we're definitely going to do Divine Embrace with the new update coming out just because we believe it's going to be better. Real world testing will let you know. We might change this back to Light's Embrace afterwards, but this is one to use. And then I'm going to take Divine Embrace, cost 20%, 20, uh, cost 20 mana which is actually pretty good helps decrease the cost not too crazy okay then over here we're going to take absolve life and heavy attacks no longer consume mana just a simple one that we want to take uh bliss for touch uh light attacks now heal for 16 percent of weapon damage when passing through ally just in case you have somebody around you you definitely want to make sure we take this um but you can use a solo also um just a nice little effective uh ability to have just to get the divine blessing okay then this is where the key comes in, okay? Sacred Ground. You got to make sure that you lay this on the ground and you stay in it. Because that's what's going to keep you healed for the long run, okay? This, tied with Incinerate, Flamethrower, Fireball, you can do a ton of damage very fast and keep yourself healed for a decent amount of time with Sacred Ground without having to worry about anybody around you or having to take potions or pots or anything like that. You got to have make sure you have Sacred Ground and try to stay in it. If you can get sacred ground down and you can trigger the rune of fire in the same spot and use incinerate you could do a massive amount of dps for yourself and kill a lot of enemies around you you'd be you'd be crazy to think about how much damage you could really put out with this build okay and then we're gonna max it out with holy ground because it helps regenerate stamina and mana 50 percent faster helps us with our fire staff crazy amount of damage and you can pump out a lot very very fast okay and not that you're gonna use anointed also um this is for allies if anybody's running with you it's very good for you to have, okay? The passive uh, Desperate Speed, uh, when you heal anybody 50% 50 uh, health or lower, you get a cooldown reduction. Sacred Protection, while holding a Life Staff, increases the amount of incoming healing to all friendlies in your group by 5%. It's very good if you have anybody with you. Um, Revitalize, when you hit a Light Attack, reduces Life Staff abilities by 5 or cooldown by 5%. So just keep throwing your Light Attack, helps cooldown uh, cooldowns decrease by five percent very solid enchant adjustment enchanted justice when hit in battle activate a healing aura for you and near nearby enemies in a four meter radius and aura heals for eight percent of weapon damage just another reason to get uh, healing from it and then intensify when you hit with a heavy attack you gain a stacking 10 percent bonus to healing effectiveness for uh 10 seconds so <clears throat> if you get hit with a heavy attack um or when you hit a heavy attack, you gain 10% bonus. So you can get pretty much a 30% healing bonus if you throw three heavy attacks. Not the ideal for when you're solo, but if you can get this off, you can do pretty much damage and you divine and you put this with divine and brace. 30% more weapon damage, that's gonna put you at 100 170% heal on divine and brace, which is pretty dang solid. Okay? So you're almost getting double the amount of weapon damage healing if you can get these two together. And then not only that, you get Define Blessing. Uh, when you heal an ally for 50% less health, you are healed for 30% more, or you heal for 30% more. So pretty solid. So this is the Life Staff build I run with my Fire Staff. Um, it's pretty effective. You can see why I kind of keep the close range. It's due to secret ground, and you can throw Orb of Protection down on yourself. Um, so you can take less damage. This will heal you more, and then able to pump out a lot of DPS with your fire staff if you can get the fire rune to trigger inside the sacred ground and then pump out incinerate fireball um, and then also your flamethrower and control mobs and take a lot less damage so that's why we run this it's very solid in my opinion test it out tell me what you guys think down in the comments i appreciate all your feedback tell me if you can tweak this 
I try to give it an update if I switch this after the New World update with the 3v3 in it where they're nerfing Light's Embrace and buffing Divine Embrace. We'll see what happens, okay? And definitely for armor perks for this one, you guys definitely want to make sure that you're running the, pretty much the same thing. Empower and Fireball, make sure you have uh, Ciphering Incinerate. And then you want to make sure if you can squeeze Sacred Ground in there on a piece of armor, that you can kind of switch out pretty easily. You can have that one. And then make sure your ring definitely has fire damage. That's going to give you the best build on your armor for this build. You can also add in some other things. I'm sure there's tons of perks out there for armors. But those are the ones you got to have, in my opinion, to make this build maximize. And this build is going to be pretty much focused around PvP. It's kind of what I use and what I've kind of noticed is pretty solid. Um, you can definitely use this in the 3v3 arenas, OPRs, things like that. Um, definitely a different, little different build than the last t two times we used a fire staff. So I'm going to start with the fire mage side. Of course, we're going to take pillar of fire to keep us out of distance, and you'll see why. Um, so pillar of fire, 170% damage, fire strike, uh, arson's advantage, spell focused, clear mind, clear casting, and flare on the fire mage side. Um, I can kind of go through this, but I kind of already did that in the first video or the first portion of this. Don't want to bore you guys. Just want to kind of get straight to the point so you understand why, okay? And then, of course, we're going to take Pyromania just to get the first point. And then we're going to take Incinerate again all the way down, okay? And the second or last ability, we're going to use Burnout. Burnout, we haven't talked about yet. This is definitely a fireball effect that can get you uh, away from people. Not only that, it can help you put damage on people or close the gap. So it's pretty much an invasive technique that you can use as a fireball. You can shoot around pillars in the 3v3. You can do it in the OPR. There's a lot of different ways to utilize burnout, okay? But pretty much um, you want to max that out, okay? So we have burnout, um, dash forward 11 meters, dealing 129% damage. Not only that, but it uh, does... 10% weapon damage for eight seconds. Pretty good. All in. It, if you hit, it also helps cooldowns reduce by 5%. And not only that, but heating up, it goes 50% further. So it's pretty solid. Okay. Uh, then we want to do let it burn. Uh, whenever burn damage deals, um, gains 10% four to five for two seconds. So it really helps take slow down the incoming damage that you take. It's pretty solid. Then we want to take watch it burn. Critical hits with the fire staff abilities inflict a stack of burning, 6% for six seconds, pretty solid. Um, trial by fire, when you are struck, create a field of fire around you, dealing 5% of weapon damage to all nearby en enemies in a four meter radius, and activates when struck in battle and lasts for 10 seconds. So pretty solid as you're trying to do PVP. If you get hit, it's gonna help trigger it, also help you do damage, okay? Not only that, we wanna do reheat. After four seconds without activating a fire staff ability, your mana regen is increased by 400%. So we gotta make sure that we have this because you can go through your abilities pretty quick here in PVP. Um, so you definitely wanna be using this one. This is the build I'm gonna run um, in 3v3 arenas, OPRs. I, might, I could make some changes here, but this is pretty much what I wanna use. If I really wanna make a change, I would throw, instead of incinerate, I'd probably use a uh, flamethrower or change pillar of fire for flamethrower. Um, either way, I can get pretty much any kind of burn or close range or you know far DPS, whatever you're looking for, you can kind of tailor it to yourself. But this is definitely what I'm gonna run with the fire staff in this build. Um, the second one, we're gonna use the rapier. Now, if you've ever fought in OPR or in a 3v3 arena, you know that the rapier is definitely used for evading people. It is insane how many people use it, okay? So we're gonna use it for not only damage, but we're also gonna use it to help us evade faster, okay? So let's start on the blood side. Refreshing strikes reduces all rapier cooldowns by 1% on any hit. You can stack a lot of hits very fast with the rapier. So you can actually knock your cooldowns pretty quick here, okay? With flurry, uh, you enter a pose stance and unleash a series of five quick strikes. Uh, starting at 46% damage and it goes all the way up to 82% damage and it can be canceled at any time using the dodge or by using another ability So you gotta be very careful when you do use this you can cancel animation pretty quick and then we're gonna definitely max this thing out overwhelm uh, Each hit a flurry does 25% more block damage each uh, flurry strike reduces its cooldowns by 7% uh, Not only that but uh, to the bone it increases each hit with fury extends the rapier's bleed by 1%, so it keeps the enemy bleeding for longer. And then finalize, the last hit of flurry will cause the enemy to be staggered. So as you unleash this, it will stagger your opponent if you hit the last strike. You can then evade or you can do a lot of different things, okay? 
going to be our main DPS strategy when we're in and out of attacking, okay? On the gray side, we're going to use Evade. Uh, performs a small, reliable side step in your current movement direction that cancels at any current activity or provides momentary invulnerability. Light attacks made during Evade are performed exceptionally fast. So you can use it in a lot of different ways. You can see that you become invulnerable for a slight second, and not only that, but if you use light attacks uh, on when you're using this, it will do them exceptionally fast. Rapier is quick enough, so you can really use this to pump out a lot of damage pretty quick and still get away, okay? And then we're gonna take this all the way down. Um, each hit, each light attack you hit reduces your cooldown abilities by 30% each, which is phenomenal. Not only that, Algo, gain haste for 30 seconds um, after a hit, which is pretty solid. And then Adagio, evading forward, gains 50% increased damage on your light attacks. So if you're closing the gap, you definitely get a nice 50% bonus when you hit an attack after you're chasing somebody. Uh, then Crescendo, gain 20% stamina immediate on use. So not only are you going to be able to evade, be invulnerable, get a 15% bonus to damage when you're pushing somebody, but you also get an extra 20% or 20 stamina immediately on use. Insane. I mean, this is a great, great attack to use inside of there because it's going to boost you up, give you weapon damage, and out of that, give you stamina back, which is great. Okay? Control breathing, you want to take a hit or use. Gain 3% stamina on any hit. With how fast you can hit with the flurry, you can gain your stamina back pretty quick so you can evade fast. Okay? Perfectionist deals 10% more damage when your health is full. So on entering, if you haven't been hit, you can get a little bit of damage buff. And then swiftness, gain 3% haste for four seconds on weight rapier hits, can stack up to five times. Pretty solid, pretty self-explanatory, okay? Then you definitely need this one, uh, Fleesh. Leaving the ground, lunging forward 10 millimeters and it's stabbing motion, piercing through enemies, dealing 145%. Now, how this is used a lot of time is one, to evade, two, to close distance and do damage, okay? Evading, it helps put a big gap between you and the person chasing you where they can't stun you and you can evade. Switch to your fire staff, throw down, incinerate around you, pillar of fire, throw a fireball, whatever you can do. This will help you close the gap and not only that, but get away from people uh, that are chasing you. So it's very effective to use uh, fleece or fleece, however the hell you want to say it, um, to get away. Okay, and then we want to max it out. Quick lunge, this reduces cooldowns by 80%. Backside, um, after performing fleece, your critical strikes within five seconds will deal 15% more damage and then interruption. Pressing light attack at any time during this will stop and perform a static continuous attack dealing 115% damage. So if you're lunging at somebody and you hit a light attack, it's going to stop immediately and pump out a bunch of damage. So if you can time your attacks, you can pump out a lot of damage really fast. And this is where it gets dangerous with the rapier. As you're coming in, you throw a fireball down. They start to run away because they're getting burned. You could then switch to your weapon, use this ability, close the distance, hit a light attack, and kill them instantly solid so this is a great build that i have um that i use in pvp it's very effective it's very very popular that we see this used and how people use the rapier and the fire staff is probably one of the highest uh you know pvp builds that we see out there probably next to ice gauntlet um it's very effective okay and then for the perks that i'm gonna have on my armor is gonna be siphoning uh incinerate refreshing pillar of fire and make sure my ring has fire damage. You could probably put on a couple other pieces of armor that gives you perks with the rapier, but I really just want to focus on the fire staff um, just due to the fact that you're going to use it to evade damage and it kind of keeps the distance between you and a enemy. And you can use the rapier to close the distance and or evade more. Well, guys, I hope you got some value out of that video with the three fire staff builds that I've been using. I've been utilizing a lot, especially in the 3v3 server since the update. So hopefully you guys try these out, test them out. I would love to hear what you guys think about these down in the comments. Again, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. And we'll see you guys in the next one.